Banakam, Namaste and blessings to everyone. This is Dr. Bhairavi Balasubramaniam, PhD, the Sky Priestess. Today I'd like to tell you about the astrology of June the 13th and June the 14th because they're pretty important alignments that are coming up. Right now we see the moon in Scorpio activating a yod or a finger of fate that is being formed between Venus in Gemini and Chiron in Aries. So Venus in Gemini, sextile Chiron in Aries, both are aspected by the moon in Scorpio creating a yod. A yod or finger of fate is a tapering alignment in astrology that literally points you towards a particular crossroads in your life. These are alignments that accelerate our experience of karma and that give us more potent tools to emerge out of cycles of karma. But if we fail to use these opportunities, we actually find ourselves getting deeper and more entrenched into karmic dynamics. So really, this is an alignment that a person needs to watch out for and to understand what it is that they are able to do with it. When we look at the moon in Scorpio, we are looking at an invitation to go even further into the depths of our own subconscious and the parts of our subconscious makeup that are actually more influenced by shadow dynamics, ancestral karma, inheritances, um, what we call the occult, what we call the shamanic underworld. These are times in which where we are being asked to look at the way our consciousness is shaped by far more hidden factors in more hidden realms. Now, with the Scorpio moon being highlighted as part of this yacht, we're actually being asked to look at these more hidden emotional, intuitive, and ancestral dynamics as they relate to our relationships and equally our sense of self because Venus is involved and Chiron in Aries is involved. The Venus in Gemini alignment asks us to look at the forms of communication that are being presented to us in our daily lives, what we hear, what we see, how we react to it, and how we play out certain roles as listener, as communicator in our partnerships, both professional and personal. I would say on a broader level, it also asks us to look at the ways that the feminine continues to whisper her wisdom through us, through the everyday, through the magic of the everyday. So it's literally about looking for the writing on the wall where you least expect it. This is also an alignment that asks us to look at the way we communicate on the basis of what we have internalized in our earliest childhood years and especially the way we understood our own identities with respect to sibling dynamics. These are also other issues that can be triggered and come up for analysis and processing with this yod involving the Scorpio moon. The Chiron in Aries alignment is one that basically says all of this is coming back to teach us a lesson in how we see the essence and identity of our own selves. Very often we have signed up for karmic contracts that tell us that we only have the right to exist if we allow ourselves to become wounded and then heal from it and then teach from it and so on and so forth. That's the wounded healer archetype. A lot of us justify our presence in the world on the basis of where we sit on that journey of becoming the wounded healer. But truly, again, this is also part of the old paradigm. As we are rewriting so many old rules, we are also being asked to look at how these patterns of being wounded and of wounding others are also present in our sense of identity, what we allow into our space, what we see in our everyday life and relationships, and ultimately how that plays out in our own emotional worlds. You're going to be seeing a lot of digging, a lot of, how do I put it, reflection that is needed that goes way, way, way back into the foundation of ourselves, but also the way in which that self was shaped and influenced by their early familial and childhood and domestic arrangements. So it's going to be a time where you're really looking at multiple interactions with others to understand just what the heck is going on. So in terms of signs and in terms of planets, there's a lot going on with this yacht, and so you can understand why I felt the need to make a video on it. At this time of making the video, we also see Black Moon Lilith, also known as the Mean Apogee, trined the Scorpio Moon. If you have any bodies near the start of the sign of Cancer, you will see a Grand Water Trine. But effectively, the Black Moon Lilith and Scorpio Moon alignment once again bring to us the need to look very carefully at shadow dynamics that are coming up to us. 
and to have an extra layer of discernment in terms of the energetic dynamics that we are looking at, be it within ourselves, with our family, with our ancestry, with our finances, with our sexuality. What part of the dynamic is actually shaped by illusion? What part of the dynamic is actually being shaped by a relationship between victim and abuser? Who is truly the victim? Who is truly the abuser? And who is really using these archetypes to their advantage? Sometimes abuse is committed by those who play the card of the victim. So these are times where we can't really assume that things are exactly what they look like. Discern, 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 and know that people are playing on, you know, poor me, woe is me dynamics in a bit to get other people's energy, attention, and time. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't help people. You should just see if that situation is being played out in a certain way. If you are dealing with individuals who display traits of covert narcissism, this is a time where you really need to have your guard up. Projection dynamics and glamouring dynamics are extremely high in this time period. Take the time to take a step back. If things are too emotional, if your logical brain isn't working, don't make a decision. Just feel into it process the emotion and wait to see what happens. Now, if you're looking for in times and prompts to action, look at June the 14th. June the 14th, we see a powerful grand water trine formed with the Scorpio moon, Mars, Mercury, and the North Node in Cancer, Neptune in Pisces, all creating this powerful triangular alignment. And they are actually put to a point of focus known as a kite alignment when we also include the South Node and um, Saturn in Capricorn. So it's almost like, you know, if you look at a kite, it's like a diamond shape. You can even think of it like a bow and arrow where you're pulling back a point of intensity to launch another point of awareness forward. And you can read more details in the write-up. But long story short, our emotional triggers are prompting us towards action. So there is this trend or fetish, I should say, in saying that somehow a person who is emotionally triggered is less spiritual. Well, I'm not going to claim that my truths are the absolute truth, but from experience, and I'm doing the work of walking the lines of spirituality and social justice for at least 28 years of my life, I can tell you that's bullcrap. We live in a human, plant, animal reality that is 3D and beyond. We come with physical bodies, with emotional bodies, with mental, psychic, and spiritual bodies, all of which have come to learn certain things and have certain experiences. When we are emotionally triggered, this needs to be an impetus to self-realization. It is an impulse to say, look within and understand what has happened, and then respond accordingly. It is a bit of a fad to say, transcend all of this. You're higher than above that and all of this. You're above all of this. Well, I'm sorry, I came here to learn a lesson. We keep using spirituality as a form of escapism to avoid taking real actions, to avoid truly engaging with the causes and the situation that the planet and our own lives are in at this time. And my, you know, my deep respect for those who, despite projections from perhaps well-meaning others or perhaps people are trying to play a little game of spiritual up, one-upmanship, my respect for those who still step up and speak their truth, irrespective of how others wish to see them. As a spiritualist, I use my platform to speak about social justice issues as and when I feel called and guided to because that is part of the work. Armchair spirituality is not what I practice here. Transcendence is not an invitation to turn a blind eye to human suffering. And whilst we cannot all solve all things, there needs to be something, one, even if it's a small cause, if it's a great cause, it doesn't matter. There needs to be something that each one of us can actually stand by and look at in terms of the greater world around us. A friend of mine and I were having a discussion where we both kind of went, the way spiritual discourse is being phrased right now is actually encouraging more people to kind of bury their head in the sand and say, I'm just going to focus on me right now. The world will have to take care of itself. And I would say it's more of a balance between the two. Only if you are functional can you actually have a functional response to a deeply disturbed world. Only if the world is functional can it actually hold the space for you to be at the same time. They are not two separate questions. And this kind of alignment and prompting is coming up for all of us very, very strongly on June the 14th. 
we are being asked to act. We are being asked to recognize that emotional trigger and to recognize that moving through that trigger is the work of this time. To be in the here and now, to understand that feeling anger, feeling sadness, feeling victimized, feeling vulnerable is but the first step in realizing I got to do something about this. It is all too easy to try and project or use the word karma to blame people who have had bad experiences. It is all too easy to say, rise above it, God will take care of it. Well, you know what? God gave us tools. The divine gave us a voice. And I feel that part of the reason why we have that voice is to use it. With Mercury, Mars, and the North Node in Cancer, that is exactly what we are being called to do. As someone who does this, who lives this truth, to those who are willing to do the same, ignore the armchair spiritualists. They're not going to do anything for you. Only you know whether you are coming from a place of inner alignment and whether your reaction to a trigger is something that prompts a warranted response or not. Sometimes triggers are just there for us to let go. But when we look at the scale of astrological alignments right now, we're not being asked to turn the other cheek. We're being asked to do something, to take a stand. Too often has older paradigms of spirituality simply told us to leave the status quo intact. More often than not, this was already when spiritual teachings had been co-opted by human political interests. I like the, the, the story of Jesus. I'm not making any comparisons, but I like what Jesus did. I like when he went into the temple and kicked out all the money lenders. I mean, that's my version of Jesus. I go, all right, man, I can stand by this. I like looking at social reformers and visionaries and you know, spiritual beings that took a stand irrespective of what people said about them at that time. And that's what all of us are being asked to do. The only thing I would say is remember, your emotional triggers can push you into a space of reactivity. Once you move through it, you go into a space where you are able to respond more so with your aligned presence and what it is that you need to be doing in response to that situation. There is a difference. So take the time to breathe, to process, to think, to strategize before you speak and before you act. And as you do so, remember that this is part of your sacred medicine, your sacred work in the world. It is what all of us are being called to do on different scales and in different ways across the planet. In short, do what you can, or at the very least, get out of the way of people who will. So, that's what I have to say in terms of that alignment. For those of you who have any bodies that are between, say, 15 to 21 degrees Taurus and Virgo, you will experience this alignment as a grand sextile or star of David. Manifest wisely. Look at all parts of yourself as best you can, the conscious, the unconscious, the superconscious. Look at all aspects of you before you choose to manifest something. It will go a long way if you actually take the time to be a little bit more conscious about how you use this energy. But in short, these two days, June the 13th, June the 14th, are extraordinarily intense because of the activations of the Scorpio moon. And of course, after that, we're going to be seeing the build up to the full moon in Sagittarius, conjunct the galactic center and Ixion the tyrant. These are times where we are being asked to step up in short. And it's got to come from a place of true, raw, authentic self-awareness within. There is no burying your head in the sand anymore. That's what I got to say. Take care. Many blessings. I'll try to follow up with another video closer to the full moon itself. Remember, you are the medicine that the world needs. And the time for you to use it is now. Bye-bye.